Hello, I'm Mark McCafferty. I'm here with McCafferty'sPercussion.com. Today we're going to talk about timpani and timpani gauges, specifically a DIY timpani gauge. Something you can do yourself without having to lay, I'll lay a lot of money. So, first things first, let's talk a little bit about gauges. Gauges are great tools for when you have to make fast pitch changes and you don't have time to actually get down and tune the drums properly whether you're uh, tapping with your finger or tapping with the mallet. They're also great if you have to be completely quiet when changing pitch, such as at a tune change or a number change in a musical or something like that. The problem with gauges, to all you students out there that are going to try and use this DIY timpani gauge to get through your timpani lesson, the problem with gauges being that you can become dependent on them. You should never do this as a timpanist. You should always be able to tune the drums on your own, match pitch the ensemble, and make sure that you're able to tune the drums independently of the gauge while the ensemble is playing. Gauges should really only be used when you don't have time to make that tuning change without using the gauge. There is a lot of literature out there that requires this. That being said, make sure you can tune. Now, to create your do-it-yourself timpani gauge, of course you have to have timpani. Hopefully they're either there or, you know, set up or you brought your drums, etc. Make sure that the heads are balanced, the pedals are balanced, the, re the drums are ready to go, the heads are cleared, etc. What you're going to need, some kind of string or twine. You want something light, flexible, and not too heavy. If it's too heavy, it can create some buzzes, it can create some issues. If it's not flexible enough, it won't move smoothly with your pedal, and that's key. Next, you need some tape. I like masking tape because it's cheap, it's light, fits in your stick bag easily, and when you take it off the drums, it doesn't leave any residue, and it usually doesn't take any paint if you happen to put it on the bottom and you have fiberglass kettles. You need a tuner. If you're going to set your gauges, set them with a tuner. As good as you might be at tuning timpani, I'm glad that's great, but a tuner is better. A tuner gets down to, you know, usually they have a margin of error of one cent or less on a pitch. Even trained human ears can only get down to two or three cents between sharp or flat or right on the pitch. Obviously playing with, the, with an ensemble, they're never completely in tune anyway and you have to make adjustments but use the tuner plus a tuner is typically faster when you have to move really quick across a large range of drums whatever use a tuner to set your gauges so you don't have an embarrassing mistake later on when you realize that you didn't focus enough when you were tuning and listening to your intervals earlier something to weight down the string with Something, it's fairly heavy, but pretty small, and doesn't make a lot of noise when it's going up and down, because it's going to have to go up and down to weight the string up. I like to use a crescent wrench or various other tools that I keep in my stick bag, and make sure you keep tools in your stick bag, because if you're not using your instruments, who knows, your own instruments, right? If you're borrowing instruments, who knows what condition they're in and what you're going to have to do to make them playable. You'll need a sharpie and, of course, a timpani mallet so that you can get the most accurate pitch relationship on the drums. Obviously, your finger can suffice, but that's the sound you're listening for to tune. Use the implement that you're going to play with to get the tuning. You may also find it handy to carry a timpani key with you if you're going to play timpani, uh, especially if you're not going to play on your timpani. First step. Take the string, get a pretty good length of it. I like to use this juke twine. I got it from some crafts project um, years ago, and I bought a bunch of it. It's light, easy to transport, pretty quiet. Step one, most timpani pedals have a small hole in them where they were made originally to have one of those professional gauges mount right in front of the pedal with the rod and all that stuff. And if your timpani had those, Great, you don't need this video. If they don't, you have you, have, you usually have holes in the pedal, and if not, quick work with a little drill will um, take care of that. It's pretty easy. I've done it on other timpani, 
especially this this one over here that uh, the toe is broken off <laughs> before I got it, by the way. But anyway, you want to tie this this string on here in a way that it's not going to move around a whole lot. So you get it tied on there. You don't want it slipping up and down the pedal. You want it to stay right in that little hole. Now. An extended collar drum, you can just take it straight up and you can take it to either side, this way or this way, but you just loop it around the lugs and it actually travels a little across the head. It is resting on the head and some purists would yell at me for that, but um, you know what? That's their problem. So, also, um, most drummers I've known have car carry pocket knives with them. I highly recommend it if you're going to be a freelance musician because you never know when you're going to have to cut string to make it to do it yourself timpani gauge. Next, you've got the string on there, you get your weight, you tie it to the end of the string. Get it kind of close up there so it's easy to get back and forth. And so that when it goes up and down, you don't have the sound of, in this case, a crescent wrench hitting the stage floor, which of course is usually hollow and you don't want to make a lot of noise, etc., etc. So, tie that on there. There, great. You can see the purpose. See the, the wrench go up and down. It doesn't seem to move a whole lot. Then, you get some tape and you line it up. Get a pretty good amount. That uh, you know, masking tape is cheap, but get a pretty good amount. That way, you have plenty to write your letters on. And try to line it up right with the string. Typically, this is past the edge of the head. This is past the bearing rib, bearing edge. So you're not actually putting this directly on the resonating surface. I've got tape and a string on there, and there's no noticeable difference in the sound quality, quality of the drum. The next step is to make a mark on this piece of string. I like to do it somewhere in the middle. I like to do it somewhere in the middle so that I know that it's going to be easy to see and that it will stay on the tape. Again, that's why you got a large piece of tape out. Always carry second sharpie in case your first one apparently doesn't work. Okay, throw that away. The next step, of course, wherever that mark is, that's your fundamental. If you can see the mark, it's pretty small, but if you look right here at the tip of my finger, I made a little mark on the string. As that string moves, that mark goes up the tape. You set whatever your fundamental pitch is, it should be somewhere around the D. A little flat. Right? And then you make a mark. You say D. Somewhere around there. Then you continue up all your pitches. And of course, check it with the gauge so that your marks are, at, are as accurate as possible. I Hopefully, don't need to explain that you don't want to move the drums or mess with the heads after you've gotten these gauges set. But, simple do-it-yourself timpani gauge. Now, you may ask me, Mark, I'm not fancy. I don't have an extended collar drum. Okay? So you have a regular collar drum. In other words, you don't have space on the edge of the head to take that up over the head because it would actually sit across the head and it would buzz creating a disturbance. Well, pretty simple fix. Instead of putting the tape up there and instead of threading the string through there, simply string it through these two parts of the spider, the lug mountings. Either there or down around the other parts that stick out, put your tape down here, make your mark. Requires a little bit lower of a look, but it'll work on a regular collar instrument just as well as it does 
on an extended collar instrument. Now, because the, the pedal doesn't move quite as much and all that kind of stuff and the tip of the marker is pretty wide, I will say that I have noticed that this kind of do-it-yourself timpani gauge is less accurate than one of the professional gauges. I have one here, I have one on one of my other drums. Between the, those two, I can get most of my quick pitch changes. I usually don't do this do-it-yourself timpani gauge anymore. This is worth the purchase if you're finding yourself playing timpani often in a setting where you have to have lots of quick pitch changes. Very worth it. The do-it-yourself gauge will get you through it, and it can get you through a gig where you're just called up and you have to make it work. That happens a lot. Be prepared for it. There you have it. There's the do-it-yourself timpani gauge. If anybody has any questions, feel free to email me at mark at McCafferty Percussion dot com.